Good morning. How are you? Um, I'm going to be asking you that question every week because it's important. It's important that I ask it because I care. And it's important that you answer it because we need to be honest with ourselves. Now is not the time for I'm fine, thanks. So what is your answer? If I'm honest, there have been a number of days over the last week where the answer for me has been a question from Psalm 43. Why are you downcast, O my soul? And I felt downcast. Today, I should have been in beautiful Keswick for a conference and with an organisation called Faith in Later Life. And I was really looking forward to it. Meeting new people with a similar vocation, um, making new connections and getting some new ideas. Um, I was also looking forward to just spending a bit of me time in the glorious Lake District, if I'm honest. But instead, I'm at home and feeling a little bit sorry for myself. But then they sent me an email and in that email was a blog post um, talking about the way that we look at things. And the author was talking about looking up, looking down, looking out and looking back during this time. And it was the looking up that struck me. Looking up is the remedy to being downcast. If you're downcast and you make yourself look up, sorry for the hair, I really need a haircut. Um, your posture changes and your outlook changes, your aspect changes and you change. And this thought about looking up took me to Psalm 121, which is a very well known passage of scripture, which I'm going to read to you. I need new glasses as well as a haircut. I lift my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber or sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going, both now and forevermore. Comforting words. So, there are a few things about these verses that struck me. Firstly, in the King James Version, the first line is, I will lift mine eyes to the hills. There is an act of will involved. It's much easier to be downcast and gloomy and look down. It takes effort to raise our heads, to change our outlook and to look up and we have to mean to do it. Secondly, the writer is unequivocal. Our help comes from the Lord. Whatever we need, however we need to be helped, we can rely on God to provide that help. This psalm seems to have been written for multiple purposes or certainly was used for multiple purposes. It was used by soldiers on the night before the battle. They knew that their help came from God. It had to come from God and that he was with them fighting their battles. And it was also used by pilgrims on their way to Jerusalem as they got to the dangerous hills outside the city into bandit country. They would sing this. They had to rely on God to watch over them and to help them reach their destination safely. Thirdly, the psalmist tells us that God never sleeps. He doesn't even slumber. He's not taking 40 winks on the sofa ever. That doesn't happen. He is awake and alert and watching over us at all times. Now we don't know if this psalm was written by David, but you can sort of hear his voice in it. And as you read this, you get the sense of God as our good shepherd who watches over his flocks. David knew that a shepherd couldn't afford to sleep on watch. The safety of the sheep depended on him staying awake. And God doesn't sleep. Nothing catches him out or surprises him Therefore, we can rest in his presence. 
as in Psalm 91 that we read last week, this passage talks of God being a shade for us. He will provide us with shelter and protection, a place to rest and be refreshed. Now, anyone that knows me well knows that I have a song lyric for every occasion. And actually, this one has come up a number of times this week. And it's from a, a song called Still and um, that's come out of the Hillsongs Church. And the words are, find rest my soul in Christ alone. Know his power in quietness and trust. And it then goes on to talk about when the oceans rise and thunders roar, that we will soar with God above the storm because he is king over the flood. And I heard a great quote this week about prayer that I really like. Um, and it just says this, prayer is relaxing into the goodness of God. And I don't know about you, but I need that. And I love that. It's not about asking God for stuff or trying to say the right words or even for the right things. It's about relaxing in his presence, trusting in his love and goodness and knowing that he already knows what we need and that he is always where our help comes from. Now, I think this, um, this answers some of my why so downcast question. I am rubbish at relaxing and resting. I take after my mother. Both physically and spiritually, I find it really difficult to just relax and rest. And it's a really hard time now for those of us who are doers. We don't have our usual outlets for ministry and um, and help ministry and, and helping people. Resting isn't something we do well in this culture and we are being made to rest. And certainly I don't rest well. And that's something that's become startlingly obvious to me during this time. So maybe it's time to focus on being and not doing, to slow down, to rest in his presence, to let him heal us and restore us, to prepare us for whatever is coming next, because there will be a next. The next is coming. In one translation of Psalm 121, the final verse says, you will be safe when you leave your homes, which seems rather appropriate for right now. And I think God wants to use this time of enforced slowdown to prepare us for when we leave lockdown and get back into the world. There is a quote from Corrie Ten Boom, um, who was a wonderful lady. Um, love her stuff. She was a prisoner in the Ravensbrück concentration camp and her whole family was killed during the Holocaust. Um, but she went on to be an incredible witness to what Jesus can do if you let him. And the quote is, I know that the experiences of our lives, when we let God use them, become the mysterious and perfect preparation for the work he will give us to do. It sort of links in with Romans, um, Romans 8. I'm going to read that again, actually. I know that the experiences of our lives, when we let God use them, become the mysterious and perfect preparation for the work he will give us to do. Now, none of us know what post-lockdown will look like, what church will look like, what our ministry to Hucknall will look like. And we need to be thinking about that. And as a leadership team, we, we are. But so do you. We need you to be seeking God yourself. He wants to speak to and through you as much as he does to us. Um, to inspire all of us with new ways of doing faith and life and to prepare us for what's next. He wants you to know that he watches over you, that he will be your help and that you can trust him with it all, however strange and new and frightening it might be. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you that you are our source of help, that we can trust you to watch over us, to protect and help, to guide and to lead us. Thank you that we can relax into your goodness and that our souls find rest in you alone. Help us to spend time with you today and every day to seek your face, your voice and your presence. Help us to recognise your care and provision. Please be what we need today. In Jesus name. Amen. So have a great day. I will see you next week. Take care. Stay safe. Um, yeah, see you soon. Bye.